Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest on the line. He was frozen for a little bit, so he said, let me go by the indoor pool where he has better service. Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Lucas. My guy. What's up, brother? I feel like you late this year, man. You done dropped ADHD and Evolution, and you just popping up on us on the, on, on the Zoom? No, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm late. <laughs> I, I, stopped, I, stopped, uh, I stopped doing interviews and stuff a long time ago. <laughs> Why? Why? Just because I just felt like this, uh, I don't like, I didn't like the way they twist the narrative and twist the words and try to, you know what I mean? Like manipulate the situation and then put clickbait and all that weird stuff, man. It was just weird, but I just, I didn't like it. And I just, I felt like uh, last interviews I had, I was actually with Atlantic and it's, and it started feeling like, it started feeling like they were more favors than, you know, than, mm. than the people actually really wanted to interview me. Cause once I sat down with them, you know, it was like they didn't really do their research. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, they were just asking stupid questions. And it was just like, bro, like, come on. And then and then actually, it might have been, I think it was Hot 9-7 um, who had told me um, in the interview, like, that Atlantic or whoever reached out to them to do, to get me the interview. And I didn't like that. Cause it was like, you're making, you're making me feel like, Y'all, you know what I mean? You don't want me here, but... Y'all chasing for an interview. That's yeah, what I, feel like. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. So I was just like, I'm straight, I'm straight with interviews, bro. I don't want to feel like I'm here because, you know what I mean? Niggas made a call or something. Like, I didn't like that. You, like, you you want people to really appreciate your art, really appreciate your music, what you bring into the culture? You put you put so much into your music and your videos and the, and the whole concepts. Mm -hmm. So I can see why you would feel that way. You should actually do something where you interview yourself Maybe you could be the journalist, and then you can show people how it's done. That'd be interview. dope. In a song. <laughs> that would be cool. Is that why you left Atlantic? Is that the reason why you decided to, to lead a major? Nah, I left, I left Atlantic because it just didn't feel like, uh, I didn't feel like I was growing. Pause. You know what I mean? It didn't, it didn't, it didn't feel like I was, it, I didn't feel like they knew what to do with a Jordan Lucas. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just felt like that. The label structure is just designed a certain way that they have certain protocols and certain, you know, uh, teams designed for certain things. And it just didn't fit in with the way that I like to do things because I like to work in real time. I'm like, a, you know, write the song today, uh, you know, uh, and, then, and then two, three days from now, I'm shooting a video, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then the next days after I'm putting it out like I'm I work in real time and you know they didn't the way that their their structure was set up it wasn't set up for that it, it was set up for you know the certain protocols in which you know uh you had to shoot a video in the, the two months from now and then by the time you got the finances you know it was everything was structured in a way that just didn't go with what I was trying to do so um we got into a we got into it a lot you know what I mean but it just, it, yeah, but you know, honestly, you know, I think that the label situation it, it works for some people. You know what I'm saying? It just, it just, it just didn't really work with me. I don't think your ideas are easily explainable to like these culturally clueless people at these record labels, though. Like you're yeah. the type of person that you just gotta show trust. him. You gotta trust. You gotta trust him what he does. Absolutely. But even, even then, like, not even just the ideas, but um, just, just as, as far as like. Even as far as um, to the way that we wanted to market, you know, it's a way to, to, to just to, what worked for me, they didn't understand. Mm -hmm. Like how, what worked for Jordan Lucas, they didn't get it because they've never really seen, they never really seen it before. So when we were, when we would talk about certain things and, you know, me and my manager would be fighting for, you know, uh, for 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 budgets and in, in, in uh marketing on certain things that they didn't understand or they didn't see you know they, it, to them it's just like this doesn't make any sense but i'm like I'm, i can show you how it makes sense i can show you the numbers i can show you where i was at before i came here i can show you where i'm at now and this is exactly what we did so why are we stopping what's working let's continue to do mm -hmm. what's working and because you don't get they didn't understand it you know what i mean they wasn't they're not set up to understand you know what I mean? That what works for somebody else doesn't work for somebody else. 
You know what I mean? Everybody has their own way, their own blueprint, you know, when it comes to this music shit. Like, you, what works for this person that wouldn't work for me and what works for me wouldn't work for this person. So they were trying to, they were trying to put this, certain structures on everybody and it just didn't work out for me. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, how many songs did Atlanta give you with Bruno Mars on the hook? And wanted you to write to it? Uh, none. I wish. <laughs> was it easy word? to get off? Was it easy to get off or was it was it a little difficult? Because I mean uh, it was it was um uh it was, I mean honestly Julie Julie Greenwald is so cool and she's so dope, you know what I mean? That she knew she knew that it wasn't a good it just didn't make sense. It wasn't a like good she fit. Mm -hmm. fought, she fought to keep me there, she really did. Um, I just think because, you know, she liked me as a person and she felt like it could work and she really believed in me. But, you know, we, we had a lot of she she calls she calls me her wife her ex-wife and shit. Like, I don't know. <laughs> she calls you her ex-wife? <laughs> ex-husband. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, wow. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. When you turn to the side, your side profile looks like Kaiser a little bit. Yo, shut the fuck up. I will fight like him right now. <laughs> he owes you five minutes, joining. Does your you side five profile look like Kaiser when you turn to the side and talk? Like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the lighting, brother. It's the it's lighting. The lighting. <laughs> Why do I put the new light? Let me. Yo, but um, but yeah, just you know, Julie Julie Greenwald is, is cool. She's dope. She let me. She let me get off, which is. I'm I'm grateful that she let me even get off in the first place, Paul. Right. So, the fact that I the fact that I can leave Atlantic and and, and uh, you know she'll still text me to this day with like opportunities. So you know it's a, it's dope. Would you ever sign with a major again? Um, I, I don't think so. If I did, it would have to be it would have to be like the way that I would I would have to structure the deal the way that I wanted to. Like it couldn't it couldn't be like what my deal was with Atlantic. Well, before we talk about this latest project you put out, can we talk about Telly for a minute and how you came up with that concept and so people can know exactly what it is too? Oh yeah, a million percent. So uh, Telly is uh, it's an it's a it's an app that me and my uh, my manager Drew designed that is pretty it's pretty uh, pretty much a pre production tool for artists to. Um, be able to have something tangible that they can use before they go into the studio. So you you could write on it, you know, uh, at the same time as you play the beat and then record. And then, you know, there's a bunch of rhyming dictionary words and stuff on there. You know, you can loop as a loop function. You can invite other artists in and then write from remote locations under the same beat. Um, then there's a management portal in there, which allows the managers to uh, pretty much be able to control all their artists, all the artists' assets from split sheets to, you know, just everything. It's just a whole, it's a, it's, it's, it's dope. Sony actually invested in it. And, um, I saw that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're partners, which is fire. And, uh, yeah, so we're about to launch, uh, uh, I think this month or next month. We're about to, we're about to really launch it this month or next month. I'm not I, sure, but. I think that's dope that Sony invested in it and you're not signed to Sony. Yeah, nah, me and Sony have a really dope, dope relationship. Once I left Atlantic, I was able to um, build all these dope relationships where it didn't involve me signing, like, directly. But, you know, they still did, like, a lot of shit for me. You know what I mean? Like, they still, like, really, like, looked out for me on certain things. And I didn't have to give up anything. You know what I mean? So. Mm -hmm. Does Joyner Lucas feel like he's underrated? You dropped two projects this year, two great projects, Evolution and ADHD. And I, I don't feel like your name is in the conversation the way it should be. Do I feel like I'm underrated? Um, hmm. Yes. Like, no, if I, if I am underrated, then it's my fault. You, you think? Know, Why? Why do you say that? Yeah, it just means I'm not working hard enough. That's all. It just means that I just need to be more visible. I need to work. I got to figure out another plan on, on on how to be more visible. That's all it is. I don't blame anybody for that but myself. If I if I was underrated, you know, I don't think somebody decides, like, this guy is going to be underrated. And then now everybody's like, he's underrated. I just think that that has to do with the artist that's underrated. And then for whatever reason, uh, whatever that artist is doing, it's not giving him the visibility that, you know, he needs or, or, or putting him in the conversation that he should be in. So it only tells me that I just need to work harder, work smarter, 
and and uh, figure out a new visibility plan. I don't think yeah. so because I think the art, the art, and you as an artist is there. The art that you put out, whether it's your videos and the songs and the music and yeah. the albums, so I think is there. So I, I don't necessarily believe it's you though. Nah, but again, like it's 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 all about like it's all about what's working, right? It's like what is what what is like what what is working for who and for what and for why and mm-hmm. why is that working for them and why is this work see my i have like a a, a certain type of lane right like mm-hmm. you know with my leading storytelling stuff like whatever whatever like you know when it comes down to that and then um the highest streaming artists right now are young young artists and mm-hmm. you know their records aren't really storytelling you know what i'm saying they just it's all swagged out it's all you know for whatever the case is so you know um the visibility on them is a little bit different because of it the, because they they're, they attract like the young young kids you know what i'm saying the 15 16 17 year old swagged out my, that's not really my that's not really my thing you know what i mean like i haven't really even tapped into that market yet like i'm I don't know. I'm I just just doing me, just on my storytelling vibes, or like you know, just trying to create like cohesive bodies of work. But um, there's just a lot of things that I haven't really tapped into yet. So you know, I just have to figure out what it is that I have to be doing better. You know what I'm saying? Also, at the same time, like um, everybody's all in cahoots with each other. Like these records, they, these cats, they all do records with each other. I don't. I haven't done records with anybody really like that, except for like the goats. You know Come on, Brown. man! You got you Will, Will Smith. Smith. You yeah, got Chris Brown. Brown. You said I haven't you done got... records with nobody. Eminem. 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 Yeah, name him. Will Smith. Right. Le- Legend. Yeah. Did the game five thirty years. Cool. Next. You Eminem. got Rick Ross on the album on Legend on on Evolution. Another legend, been in the game for 10, 15 years. Right. Let's 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 talk about it. Who the else? game. Eminem. The game. The game did a record with you. I think he's talking about the younger generation. That's what, I'm saying. Oh. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. Man, Maybe fuck young. them kids, join them. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. The visibility, like I don't have records with NBA young boy. I don't got records with uh Kodak. I don't Do have you records. need them though? I be yeah. think I, I would like to see you with like Griselda. You know what I mean? Royce. Ah, that's the that's what I'm saying. The spitters. I'm, I'm, no, but that's what I'm saying. Like that's uh I don't wanna See, and I feel like maybe that has been the problem is that I, I, I feel like I, maybe I keep putting myself in this box where like you just expect that. And I don't like that because it's, I feel like I, I don't want to be put in this box. So when you just said, oh, I feel like you should do a song with Griselda. What? Like Griselda, I love Griselda, but I love Royce. Those are my family, but it's like, I don't want to do, right? I don't want to just do a record with yeah. the I'm just just relating the lyrical box, like nah, bro. Like that's not where I want to be. Like I feel like I have the case. I could absolutely make mainstream record. I could and still be joiner. I could I could yeah. jump on a and be a young boy and and, and be joiner Lucas and kill it and still fit in with the new. I haven't t- tapped into that yet. That's wow. something I haven't d- done yet, right? I've just been kind of doing me, and I've been very successful at doing me. So you know. I'm not really tripping about the overrated thing. I'm rich. I've done. I, I've done everything. That I, I've got out the hood. You know, I retired my mom. You know, what I'm saying I done. You know, bought houses. Like I'm good. Like I'm. That's what we wanted, right? That's that's yeah. what we. That's I what told we I told Envy that earlier when we was we was talking about you before the interview and and you know I was just like yo but Joyner is doing good. You know what I mean? Like great. Like bro. Uh oh. Yeah. No. Like, Huh? I love it. I, I think it was put, like, I was oh, yeah, no money for him, bro. I was Don't you do that. Early. Don't pull out like, no money for him. I just want I just want people to I, th- <laughs> I think a lot of people don't necessarily get it. Of course, I get it, but like when you talk about some of the artists that you would do it, but if you think about it, Hove did records with everybody from Big, but then he also did Juvenile Little Wayne when they came in the game early. He did Too Short. It just wasn't uh lyricist. He did records with whoever was was hot and he would compete with them, which I always thought was dope. Exactly, a million percent. You got to be in those conversations. Like, you know, I'm, you know, for, for, I got in the game. When did I actually come in the game? I got in the game, what, three years ago? I've been in the game and, you know, in them three years that I actually got in the game, it was a whole, it was lots of years before then where I was trying to even get to, to even almost be in the game. And then when I got in the game, I got in the game off of doing, 
uh, music that I love, the music that was true to me, like the, you know, and and people know me for 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 being Jordan Lucas. Like people know me for storytelling. Right? They know me for Ross Cap. They know me for I'm not racist. They know me for Will. They know me. like these are records that I love doing, and I never had to, you know, I never had to make records that I didn't want to make in order to get to where I to where I'm at, you know, which is but now that and and I and I got rich off of being me, you know, and and I know that which is a great feeling, brother. Yeah, That's a freeing feeling. Great feeling, you know, so the people that do so the people that that do, you know, uh fuck with my music and they do, you know, fuck with me, um it feels good to know that I actually got to where I needed to go by being me authentically, you know? So I'm not tripping about being underrated at all. Again, I'm I'm very very well off, very very good. Now, and what about son- the so- the song "Snitch"? Right? Did that come from everybody talking about "Snitch," or was it something that you seen in your own hood, or was it what what gave you the con? I mean, the the, the concept is dope, and, and how you broke it down and how you did it. What what was the what was the mindset for that one? For "Snitch," I mean, we've been here. I mean, we. I mean, the whole forever. Snitch- right. Right. You even had a skit on there when you're young. They tell you in school about title tales. Snitches get sticky. Right. Yeah. Um, I try to touch on concepts that, in my own like unique way, that I feel like people haven't done. You know, and I and uh, a lot of people haven't touched on the concepts, and I choose them like very wisely. Uh, and it's a very controversial concept or or subject. Mm-hmm. I didn't create it based off of one specific person. It's just a record that I just wanted to do and just wanted to get it out the way because I knew I was going to have to do it at some point. You know, it's interesting because it is presenting both sides of the argument because everybody always says what they would do in a situation, right? Until you're actually in a situation where you have to make that decision and you're like, okay, am I going to do this and be away from my family or am I going to tell and now I can't be safe anywhere? It is a lot. And with people- the snitch record was originally, it was supposed to be different. Because what I was gonna do was, I was gonna create scenarios based off of different circumstances in which people ended up in that they didn't necessarily have any control over. And then it was gonna be like, okay, so what would you do in this situation? Mm -hmm. But then I felt like that shit started to make me feel like motherfuckers look at me like, what you you trying to say? I don't, but, 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 Huh? I don't think there's nothing wrong with that, though. Like, you're actually getting in the mind state of what would make a person do that. I actually, and I'm not even joking, I thought you should have reached out to the guy, the young boy. What guy? I'm not going to say his name, but you know who I'm talking about. Which one? The one who snitched. You should have put him on the record and wrote his part. You're saying put Takashi on the record? Yes. Yes. Join Lucas like, all right, guys, thank y'all for joining me, man. (laughs) I'm serious. (laughs) Nah, that's it. That would have been. I try to keep, as you can see, like even with the music video, I try to keep him away from even, like, I don't, you know, I could have got an actor that had rainbow hair and, you know, I could have made it a Takashi thing, but the conversation is so much bigger than Takashi. It's like he's a guy out of millions of people who, you know, so it's like the song wasn't about him, it was relevant. It happens every day. It's not just him. And that's like easy sensationalism. Let me focus it on this. And now the story is just about one person. When this is something that happens all the time. Absolutely. But we've heard a lot of snitch records. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, uh, it was all good just a week ago, ago, stuff like that. This this is what would have separated it, especially in this climate, I think. But I mean, it's a dope record either either way. Dope video. Sure, for sure. I just it's so it's a it's a fine line because if I would have put the nigga on the song, then it would have been like you know I would have been canceled for even working with six and having him in a record at all or in a video. Nobody would have cared about the art. It would have been like, why are you talking to six? If, you know what I'm saying? Nobody would have cared about the song. It would have been like, why would you put this man in your in your video or hang out or talk to him or even allow him to even be a part of what you? It would have upset a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. That's like a it's like a cosign. Yeah, nobody would have looked at right. nobody would have cared about the art at that point. You know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, you basically endorsing the snitch. This nigga went on t- trial and you know in front of everybody, and t- he did it. And now you're gonna put him in a music video on, on your platform, and now you're gonna that would have been bad, Charlamagne. What are you trying to do to me? I know, Charlamagne, you, you don't even. Interview you say you want to work with the young boys? Yeah, you were like, we we didn't even interview. Him. Like, what are you <laughs> I talking will, about? I will, young boy, okay. I will work with the young boys, and 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 I I um. 
I have relationships with a, a lot of these cats. I just, you know, I just, I, I'm never, I'm not the type of guy to, you know, try, overly try to, you know what I'm saying? Like all the records that I even have with anybody that I have now, it's just, or it's been organic. It's never been favors. It's never been, you know. But my- asking somebody and saying, here's a song I want you to get on is not necessarily a favor. They might want to get on it. No, 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 I know that. I'm just telling you that what I'm saying is that a lot of people assume that if you're on a record with somebody that you pay for it or that you are not cool with that person or are you maybe, I don't know, but like even the records I have with Chris or like Marshall or like whatever, like those are records that are all organic records. I've never paid for a feature. Like I've never done that, right? So what I'm saying is I do have relationships with some of these, with, with some of these cats and I've never, I've never, you know, use the, the, the favorite card or, or, or sent them a record and said, hey, you know, I've never done that. You know, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm going, I'm telling you, I'm going to, like, I'm definitely going to, like, again, when it comes down to, hey, what am I not doing that I could be doing better? That's definitely one of the, the, the that's definitely one of those things that's like, okay, I have to do this because, you know, I, I I like some of these cats too. You know, I just haven't worked with them yet, and I and, and I definitely want to. So you know what I meant to ask though. When you started off, you said you haven't done interviews in a long time because you did. What what made you do this interview with us? Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Charlemagne is a homie, bro, and I love Charlemagne. Yeah, he's a man. So like, I can't turn on an interview with Charlemagne. He's cool. I, I like Charlemagne. See, Charlemagne has some good out there in the world. Join him, my guy. Join him, one of the rappers I talk to for no reason. He's a good human. He's a good person. <laughs> he's a good human. <laughs> and how did you hook up with Will Smith? How, how did that relationship come together? That that came from the Will record. Just That's right. <laughs> and was like, came from, that just came from him being, you know, somebody that I grew up idolizing, um, you know, and, you know, I wanted and I, I felt like he wasn't getting the respect, you know, that he deserved. You know what I'm saying? So I just felt like, yo, let me. Let me remind people, like, you know what I mean? Like, he's just that, Will is that nigga. And, and I wanted to, and I and I wanted to make a record about it. And when Kobe died is what really prompted me to do the record, because I'm like, damn, bro. If if that was Will, I would have, that would have hurt, bro. Especially him not knowing how I felt, you know? Right. So. Did you write his verse? Yeah. Who Will's? Nah. Did you help him or anything? Nah, that was all Will, bro. How, how did you feel when you got that verse back, when, when, it, when it got sent back to you? That's what that felt like. But then you pulled up on him, though, didn't y'all? Y'all, I saw, I saw a picture with y'all together. That was recently. That was about. A, that was about a week ago. Yeah, about mm-hmm. a week. What were y'all doing? You just he was in town, or? Nah, I went. Out, um, I went to LA. Uh, I was. I'm shoot. I was shooting a Zim Zima video with uh, Mark Wahlberg, and George Lopez, and Diddy, and a lot of other legends that I love and respect, and. Um, he heard I was in town. He invited me out to his to his crib, and it was dope. That's the first time I met him, and yeah, we just chopped it up, and you know, it was dope. Did you do ayahuasca with him or anything like that? Ayahuasca. 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 What is that? <laughs> it's a um, it's like a spiritual. I don't want to call it a drug because it's like a plant. Nah, nah, I don't do none of that shit. No. No, this is good. I'm telling you, this is good. I promise you, this will. I haven't done it yet, but it's spiritual. How you gonna promise you something he haven't done it? <laughs> I promise it's gonna work well. Like, well I haven't done it yet. Know. It's but not a drug though. It's not like good. coca, heroin, no, and those shit. It makes a lot of people shit on themselves. Uh, what? Yo, it does. It makes I, you. I learned the levels quickly. Like the levels to the to the houses. Oh, quick. yeah. Talk about that. I mean, that house had to be on fucking an insane. I thought, I thought that when I bought my mansion, that I was doing some shit. Nah. You are. You do. Don't compare yourself to other people. You doing your shit, Jonah. Nah, I am not. And I tell that. And I say this. I said it's this. Still inspirational. I said this to Mark. I said, Mark, when I when I bought my shit, I thought I was a man. Bro. I thought I was doing something. I thought I was, you know, this shit got a my shit got a movie theater, an indoor pool, fucking built a studio, you know, a pool, a, everything you could think of here, seven acres, you know, and. I thought I'm like, word, this is this is and I bought my shit cash. Like I didn't even have no mortgage, nothing. Just put, paid it off, right? That was a big thing for me. And then I went to LA and I got invited to Mark Wahlberg's house. His house is stupid. His man, house is stupid. I niggas, see pictures. Bro, I went to Mark Wahlberg's house, man. 
I didn't even know what to do, bro. I'm, Yo, that's, I'm a, that's, a, that's long movie money, though, Joyner. Oh, been... This is what he says to me, too. This is what he says. He says, Joyner, he says, you're, you're a dude, right? I've been in the game for 25-plus years. This is a result of just years and years of, of figuring it out, hard work. You'll get there, right? And I'm like, nah, this is crazy, bro. This nigga got... This is this nigga's crib is like a damn resort. It look like a bro. castle resort, yeah. Castle resort, bro. It like three. My house is what fifteen thousand square feet. His house is like forty thousand square feet, mm-hmm. right? And it's just all these huge ceilings and big walls and hella garages and like you. All three of our four of our families can be in in the house and we wouldn't even have to run into each other. That's you know? crazy. It's, it's, You're gonna, but you don't, don't, don't diminish your accomplishments, though. No, I'm not diminishing my accomplishments. I'm very, I'm like, I'm, I'm again, bro. I come from nothing, bro. Like, I was, my mom told me the other day, our rent before we leveled up was like seven, like seven fifty, eight hundred dollars a month. It was, that's where we come from, right? So, again, shit's different now, right? Everything no changed, it dramatically changed for me. Like it just went from zero to 100 really quick. I went from really broke to really rich, really fast, right? As, as a result of the hard work, it just all, everything just happened at one time for me. When I signed to Atlantic, I wasn't even well off, right? Mm-hmm. I lost a lot of relationships due to people thinking that I was well off, but I was rich, you know what I'm saying? And I wasn't, mm-hmm. it cost me family, you know, and it cost me friends due to the fact that, you know, the, the perception was John is rich and he's not helping me. Wow. You know, and I wasn't in a position to help, you know. It wasn't until I got off Atlantic that I got rich, that I, that I became well off, you know, that I can actually start doing things for people. But the levels. So I so Mark Wahlberg's house, and he's a really, really, he's like a mentor to me. He's a really good guy. We both come from Massachusetts. Um really really dope dope person just embracing me really quick and was like bro you you wanted to you you, i don't know how you did it but nobody comes from boston nobody i tried it this person tried it we all tried it we failed you yeah you you've done it right and i'm proud of you and you know we built a relationship off of that pause how was will smith's house though we get into that right now right (laughs) (laughs) so after i leave with mark Wahlberg's house man i'm just I'm telling my manager, like, damn, we're not working hard enough, bro. Like, this shit's crazy, bro. And he's like, yeah, man. So two days later, I get invited to Will's house. I go to Will's house. Now, I want to talk to Will about this, too, because he knew I was, Will knew I was pulling up. He knew I was about to come. He knew I was pulling up. We told, we just texted, whatever. I pull up, right? And I press the button on the gate. He going to tell me, oh, when you pull up, you know, push the button. So. I pull up, I push the button on the gate. Then the guy, this, this, you know, is one of his security guard, and you know, hello, who is this? I'm like, it's Joyner. Who? I'm like, which me? Who? Joyner Lucas. All right, hold on one second. Give me one. What, what, what time is your appointment? He says to me. <laughs> I said, what you mean? What time is my appointment? Like, what, I don't know what time it was. It was like three. I was like three o'clock. He goes, all right, hold on one second. Comes back. So you say your name is Joyner? <laughs> oh, man, stop playing with me. Yeah, I'm just... All right, hold on one second. Let me look for you. And uh, <laughs> The dude got a compound, fam. Like, he really... My, so he opens the gates. My man's sitting on 250 acres of land. Damn. That's right. That's Will fucking Smith, God damn, damn it, man. Bro, levels is different, bro. I pull up. Guy goes, yo, go past it. He said... He said, go past the bridge, take a left or something, and park over there or some shit. So I'm driving. I see it's, I see like an exercising gym and shit, man. Jaded outside, exercising. You know what I'm saying? Three security dudes. It's like, you know, pull over there, boom. I go over. Man, my man's got a, his crib is fire, bro. He got like a bungalow style vibe to his crib, but he got a dope crib. You know, his maids running around with these plates and shit like yo hors d'oeuvres and shit on there you know serving shit tea and coffee and shit like you shit crazy bro it's just some real fresh prince of bel-air jeffrey shit i for real real shit hey. and i'm fired bro. i'm like damn man i'm like yo how many i say yo this is a big ass property it's like a whole city worth of property like yo how much property like oh you know 250 i was like damn bro 
I'm like, I thought Mark Wahlberg shit was hot. And I switched sides real quick, right? I, like, I want your house, man. Mark Wahlberg ain't doing shit, bro. You, you know, man. You know what? You know what's so in- Joyner, I'm gonna tell you what, what what's so interesting about oh, this man. conversation. Yeah. I, feel, I feel I feel movies is in your future. Like I see that for you. Yeah, 100%. that's what that's the pip, that's the that's the goal, right? For me. That's the goal. To pivot eventually pivot off of the music and get into movies. And you can see it in the, the videos. In the videos. Absolutely. Everybody that I've ever used as actors in my videos have all been my friends and family, right? And what's dope is now I get to use real actors. Mm-hmm. Right? Now I get to have real actors in the in the videos, which is fire. You know, so it's it's inching and slowly getting towards that, which which is I need that movie, bro. You know, but you did some great acting, but I don't know if it was really acting. In the video for Fall Slowly with the Shanti, mm-hmm. that was very uh, steamy and spicy. So how is that for you doing all those uh, love yeah. scenes with the Shanti, with all the camera people and the cast and crew and everybody around? Yeah, it was, that was a dream come true. Why the hell you got a quiet storm voice? You got voice that light skin voice on. That all of a sudden, it's like you hosting the quiet storm. That was a dream come true. You know, we grew up idolizing Ashanti, bro. Like she, <laughs> you know what I mean. You grew up even fantasizing, you know, about Ashanti. So being able to shoot a video like that with Ashanti was like, you know, like damn. Like I'm. Were you nervous at all? Because you guys were really like. Yo, really, and everything. I, I was, but then I wasn't. Right in a weird way, it just felt like, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I was, but at the same time. It was just so organic, you know. It was just like it wasn't. It, it just felt so organic that it didn't feel like it didn't. It didn't feel like we were forced. Like I know so many guys probably were so jealous after they saw that video. Like, how did Joyner get to do all this? Yeah, yeah. I seen a lot of the uh, reaction videos and a lot of uh, people being mad at me. I had some death threats and shit. You know, really, like, really. People were crazy about her. Yeah, man. I had a couple death threats. Okay. What is that song ba- based on? Because I know, obviously, it's about toxic relationships and always going back to those things. And sometimes I feel like people do that because they're so familiar with yeah. relationships that are toxic. And that's what you know. So you're comfortable in that space. So for you, I know a lot of this stuff is personal for you. So Yeah. Um, yeah, Fall Slowly was definitely, um, it was definitely my relationship, like, seven years ago, you know what I mean? Seven, eight years ago, it was like before, you know, the financial stress can really put you in a in a bad place, with, you know, with your significant other and all you guys doing is fighting and arguing. You know, everything is a problem because the money is, you know, you can't do nothing. So um, when I heard the beat though, here's the thing, when I heard that beat, the first thing that I thought of was Rihanna. I'm like, yeah, those sound like Rihanna beat. I don't know why I hear Rihanna on this record. It sounds like such a Rihanna record. And then the We Found Love video popped in my head. And then that's when I was like, I got to recreate We Found Love. Mm. That's what I see. I need to recreate that video. So I, I ended up playing the beat and then going to put on a video at the same time while the beat was playing. And I was like, I have to redo this video. It's been long enough. It's been, what, 10 years since she dropped that? I said, cool. Just about, yeah. Can't ask Rihanna to do it because she she did it <laughs> in that in that video. You know what I'm saying? And and, and she's a homie. And um she one of my good friends' exes, so I, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even do that, you know, with, with Rihanna. But she, but uh, I said I need to get, I need to get somebody else, you know what I mean? And then immediately, Shanti popped in my head, you know what I mean? And yeah, it was it. It's over for me. You know, let me I'm gonna give you another bad idea. Why don't you just at at certain moments remake whatever the hot young shit is, and put a verse on whatever the hot young shit is on some Jack and for Beat shit. I have. That's how I got. That's yeah. how I, I. That. So. Mm-hmm. As soon as I dropped, I'm not racist. I dropped Gucci Game remix. I remember. Mm-hmm. Remember that. And yeah. then I dropped the Twenty One Savage Bank Account remix. And then I started just check. But here's where, here's where. This is why I stopped doing that. I stopped doing that so much because I started feeling like okay. So. What's happening is I'm starting to put my. It's so easy to put yourself in a box. It's like when you continuously just keep doing something over and over and over again, it's like, all right, you, now you're the guy, you're the remix guy, right? You're Jacquees or Jacquees. <laughs> I want to be that guy. And no, this is not a shot of Jacquees. I love Jacquees. He's on. But that's what he knows that. That's what they, 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 he's like the remix guy, right? That's what they call him. Like, that's a dope alias, Jacquees Lucas. 
<laughs> I don't want to be, I don't want to be the guy that's, again, that's why even the storytelling records, I do it moderately. I don't do every single record of the storytelling. I mix it up. It's like you do the storytelling record and then you do your turn up joint and then you do a freestyle. Then you do a feature and then you do, because if I keep hitting you with storytelling records, then I'm going to be the, oh, Joe, yeah, the storytelling guy. Oh, Joe, the remix guy, the guy that just remixes the songs and he can't make his own. The guy that tries to eat off, oh, him, oh, yeah, what, what this, I don't want to be that, you know, oh, you know, so it's like, I try to, I try not to, to beat shit over the head with shit, so I just, you know what I mean? How hard is it for people to get a feature from you, since we're talking about you and having not really worked? I don't do it. Mm-hmm. So, don't. just like, <laughs> so people hit you up, you just. I turn down bags, too. I turn down bags. Why? Really, why? Man, what's it, huh? Why? Yeah, why? <clears throat> so when I first started, uh, when I first was really gunning to get into the game and I was really trying to make a living off this shit and my son was about to be born, I started like doing mad features so that I can make enough money. So when he was born, he was good. And I over you know. Saturated the market. Yeah, but like it, nobody really knew who I was at that time. But it was like, I just felt, I was just doing it just to take the bread. And it didn't feel right, right? Because even motherfuckers I didn't believe in or like or didn't like their music, I'm like, oh yeah, that's hot. Send me the bread. Right? It's like, yo, because I needed the bread. I was, I was a desperate father. Like, damn, my son about to be here. I ain't got, you know what I'm saying? The shit was messed up. So I'm like, let me just take on mad features and just just, just, it didn't even matter who it was. Let me just do it just so I can make sure my son was good when he got here. Right. I didn't like the way that made me feel. You know what I mean? I just started taking features. Some of them, some of them, I didn't even do the features. I ended up just paying them back once I got good. But I didn't like the way that shit made me feel. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of artists that hit me up to do features, but I don't really, if I'm not, if I don't really like the song like that or like it doesn't make any sense and I won't do it, especially now. You know what I mean? Because I've already, I've already done that. Right. What made you put Logic on ISIS? I put Logic on ISIS because I sent um, I sent Marshall ISIS, but he couldn't do it because he was working on his album. So he was like, yo, I'm tied up. And then he got his artist, you know what I'm saying, that he signed over there that he had to make sure it was straight. And I was like, I get it. It's cool. No pressure. But I'm not waiting. He was like, if you wait, then I'm like, nah, I'm not waiting. So I said, all right, well, I got to get somebody else on this. I didn't know who at the time. And then I ended up piecing it up with uh, Logic. And once I pieced it up with Logic, you know, which he invited me to his crib. And, you know, we in his studio. And, you know, he's playing me some of his album. Um, and then I played him some of my ADHD project. I played him ISIS and immediately, as soon as he heard it, he just started rapping in his head. And I was like, you want to jump on it, huh? Pause. He was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? He already going. I was like, you want to get you, you good? He was like, yeah. So, you know, he, so as soon as he did that, I'm already in my head. I'm plotting on a video in my head. I'm like, yo, so what day are you available to shoot? Even before he had the verse done, he was like, shit. He looked at his calendar. He was like, Shh, like three weeks from now. I said, block his day off, finish the verse. I'm gonna make sure we get the video done. I got to started setting everything up. He gave me his verse like two days later, and then the video was already was already set up to go like three weeks later. Why did you have beef with Logic? Whenever I hear people beefing with Logic, I think that's so strange. I'm like Logic. Very, you know, honestly, it was very strange. It really was. I think I was very. I think I was jealous of him. Really? Like, yeah, I think I was jealous of him. But I think I, the reason why I say that though is because I felt like where he was at at that time is where I wanted to be so much. Really? You know what I mean? Like, damn, I wish I, I wish I was here. You know what I mean? And it took, bro, I, I, I had called that man because I had an epiphany, right? I had got to a certain place in which people started expecting things of me, right? And people started just expecting that I just do shit. Like, I, people that I didn't even really know like that, you know? And I lost a lot of people and it clicked. I said everything that I accused this guy of, or I was jealous, whatever, I, it's happening to me, and I know how it feels, and it sucks. So I had a, I had called Royce, and I said, Royce, you put me on the phone with Logic, bro. I need to talk to him. 
And he's like, yeah, you know what I mean? He connected. And I just, as soon as he picked up, I said, bro, look, I just don't even say nothing. I just want to tell you, I apologize, bro. Like, I'm going through some shit right now in which I understand the reason why you, why you felt how you felt when I was coming at you the same way, you know, blah, blah, blah. I told him straight up. Like, I felt like at that time, I felt like I was, I, I was jealousy because you was doing everything that I wanted to do. You know, you were dope, you were lyrical, you know, you was, you was ripping down tours and, you know, you had all these relationships with all these artists that I loved and respected. And I, I really idolized you and I didn't even realize how much I did, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, so I gave him this sincere apology because I really meant it. And I, um, he says to me, he said, wow, bro, I don't even know what to say. Like, that's like the most sincere apology anybody in my life has ever gave me, bro. Like, wow. He was like, shit, you got me tearing up over it. Like, yo, it was a real, a real nigga conversation. And he was like, you know, where I was at at that time is I couldn't understand why you had all this energy towards me. And, you know, it was, I just had a lot of bad energy, man. Like I was, I was just, I was a hungry artist, man, coming up and I felt like he took my idea. All the things that people try to accuse me of, bro, I'm seeing, I'm like, damn, bro. Like, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I'm I get like, it. Oh, I that just... is so true that sometimes we don't like people. It's really a reflection of how we feel about ourselves. Yeah, yeah but let me tell you something though. Like, people don't know how to apologize. Mm -hmm. Like That's when you're wrong, motherfuckers don't know how to sit there and be like, yo, I fucked up. Mm -hmm. I'm wrong. I realized that I fucked. Motherfucker could be dead wrong and still carry on his energy like he was right the whole time. Or like he was, old. like it's just still your fault. So like one of the biggest, uh, one, of, one of the biggest uh, things that I felt like make me happy about who I am is the fact that I'm able to, I'm able to identify when I fucked up or when I'm wrong and give you a real sincere apology about it and, you know, not hold on to things. Like if I feel like I did something wrong, I'm gonna tell you. And when other people don't do that and other people are not like that, that shit bothers me, bro. Because it's like, come on, man. Like, it's, you know how hard it is for a motherfucker to say sorry? Yeah, and you know what else? Even you telling Logic that you were jealous of him, man. We yeah. don't realize jealousy and envy destroys from within. So you're yeah. killing yourself being jealous of another man. So just for you to even get that out is big. I didn't realize that I was jealous of him at the time. I realized the shit after because it's like there's no reason for me to be jealous at this person. I like just nigga grinded, busted, worked his ass off. He already had like nine, 10, 11 projects before he even got to that point. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like he worked for that. I just come in the game, you know what I'm saying? Thinking that motherfuckers owe me some shit. Mm -hmm. And you that, felt like you was nicer than him, I'm sure. Cause you, I mean, you yeah, are. Let's be clear. I felt like I was nicer than him. I felt like motherfuckers owed me. I felt the same about Kendrick and Cole. I felt like, you know, Kendrick, why Kendrick ain't holler at me yet? Why Cole ain't pit me up? Why, yo, I had all this energy. Like, yo, I'm finally here now. Like, niggas know who I am. I know they see me. Why nobody reaching out to me, right? And I felt like this sense of entitlement, mm -hmm. right? Just because I'm here now. I'm this lyrical rapper. I'm whoever the fuck and Kendrick and Cole and Logic and all of them should reach out to me and we should all do a record together. I had this shit in my brain where I felt like things had to be a certain way because that's what I expected. But I didn't realize, what I didn't realize was that, you know, for whatever reason, these artists, if they were like that, they're, they're different now. Like they closed off due to relationships and whatever, right. people fucking shit up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. It's, if Drake was so kind before to, you know, to do certain records with certain people, you know, whatever happened in within that relationship may have caused Drake to be like, nah, I'm not, I'm not fucking with these new niggas no more, you know. Gotcha. And here I come, like, yo, what's up, yo, where's Drake at? I'm trying to do this feature, and Drake, you know, he, even though he's he's visible, I'm visible to him. He's not just gonna jump on my shit because he's learned a lesson from what happened last time, yeah, and this yeah, is. Yeah. Not, anything about right so now I'm, I'm holding a grudge against Drake like why Drake don't want to work with me he's jealous Drake jealous you see what I'm saying so it's one of those things that you don't really realize until you actually become the person that you're idolizing and everybody's idolizing you and they expecting shit from you and fact. you're like you know what I get it now yeah, right absolutely it's like, like shit I gotta call this motherfucker and tell him I'm sorry like I fucked up I, I, I get it you know and I 
I, and that's exactly what happened. And now Logic is one of my good friends, bro. Like just me, like me and you, Sean. Like you can hit me up. It was good. How you been? Everything. Your family good? Do 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 do. Well, you should put Logic and Charlamagne on the phone. Then I've talked to Logic. <laughs> I never had no problem with Logic either, though. That's why I'm like, I mean, you know, I, I have an opinion, but I don't, I don't have a, a beef with the young brother. But when I see somebody going through, you know, mental health issues, especially being that I deal with my own, I'm like, man, I don't want to cause that brother no trauma. I don't want to cause him no pain, no hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's easy. so for, for you, well, your job is difficult too, Charlamagne, because you you're in a place where you you've been in a place for a long time where you're a, you're an authentic person who just says what comes to how you feel right and because you're a radio personality you know you don't it's like how comedians right comedians kind of comedians can say certain things because they're a comedian right and mm -hmm. because it's like you should just know that this is what I'm about to do because I'm a comedian you should just know that I'm about to make this type of joke you should just know that I'm going to offend people right and mm -hmm. and everybody should be cool with it because I'm a comedian which is kind of true, but it's kind of whack at the same time because, like, sometimes comedians can be a go a little bit over the top, right? And it's like, all right, you didn't have to say that. You, that you, you kind of yeah, I don't want to intentionally hurt nobody. Right, right. And now, now there might have been a point in my life where, yes, I did want to intentionally hurt you, but right. I felt a lot like you. I was, I was, I might have been jealous. I might have been envious. You know what I mean? Right. I might have been hating. You know what I'm saying? So when you make all those jokes about me, you jealous and you envious about me, Charlamagne? No, I'm telling you the truth. Your beard looks stupid. See? You got to stop with that Beijing. See? See? Beijing looks is stupid. That, is that hate? Is that hate? That's not hate. It just looks stupid. Is that hate? Beijing looks stupid. Is that hate? You want to be a little now, I do want to ask you, Joyner, about the last song on the album, Like a River. And, you know, that's about your father. So I just want to talk about your mindset when you were actually writing that song, how you felt, how therapeutic that was for you to discuss your relationship with your dad. Yeah, it was very, uh, it was very therapeutic for me. It was very, it was because I held a lot of this energy in, you know, for such a long time. And, you know, music is, is my, that's, you know, that's, that's my way to, you know, get some things off of, uh, of my mind. You know what I'm saying? And that, that, situation specifically is just a, a really really uh volatile you know situation that you know i can't i can't figure it out i can't talk about it into in depth of, of what actually happened but if i told you what happened you it would be quiet it would be quiet everybody would be quiet and you just be like, damn, yeah, it's just, it's a really fucked up situation, but it's something that, it lives with me, mm -hmm. because I, because to this day, I still see things that make that it's still, you know, it's still, it just doesn't make any sense. It's like, why would, right? But I think that um, me creating this record, it really helped, it helps me heal because now that I know I'm not like keeping, you know, everything away, you know, from the world, I like to, I express myself in my music, you know. So, um, it's a, it's it really it it, it the, the fame uh, amongst a lot of other things really cost me that relationship, and it's a relationship that would never be repaired ever, ever again. Wow. No matter what, can never be repaired. And not only did I lose that, but I also lost everybody else on that side. Wow. Your, your whole father's side of the family? Everybody that knew, everybody that knew about what the situation was and everybody that continued to have to continue to have a relationship with him, they had to go. Wow. wow. It's just what it was. And it's, 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 it's it, I, honestly what it feels like. Wow. That you put your, your, your family, your entire family on one plane and the whole plane just crashed. Like, Yikes. Everybody. everybody. So right. nobody on that side reached out to you when this no, no, no. kind of, but but not really, and, and they have, and I've attempted to try to, and it's just it's one of those things where it's like, you know, for me, it's like once when it, when it, when we're talking about certain shit, certain subjects, right? Like there's some things that are forgivable. There's some things that you can like, okay, this is just another. But then there's like certain things that's just like, nah, like, bro, there's a line. Like, nigga, when it comes to this, it's you got to pick a side, right? You 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 choose a side at this point because it's no, 
Like I can't I can't fuck with you knowing that you fuck with him. That's just what it is. And if you fuck with him, I don't care. Your mom, your brother, your sister, your his daughter, his, if you fuck with him knowing this, that's it. I'm not fucking with you. Period. If you in a picture with this nigga, I'm not fucking with you. Yeah. If you say that nigga's name, I'm not fucking with you. Like I'm not fucking with you. That's it. And it cost me again. It, it you know, due to that, and I and I understand it, I get it. You know, that's your son, that's your brother, it's your, your, your whatever. Cool. Have that relationship. It is what it is. Get leave me the fuck alone. I don't want nothing to do with you. I'm I'm you know, again, when it comes to certain shit, I can't, we can't, I can't look past certain things and then that's just what it is. But um, that's that's definitely a part of my life that is a very dark place for me. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, it's that crash, it's mm -hmm. that plane crash, you know, it's just everybody died. And it's just like, now it's just, I had to create my own world you know what I mean? And completely leave that side behind and completely pick up the pieces and just, you know, and continue to go. But it is difficult. It is a very difficult thing to do because you still don't understand it. You know what I mean? But it's like, you got to do it. And it, it definitely had fucked my mental health up for a little bit. Um, have, you, have you spoke to your therapist about it? I don't have one. You got to get one, brother. I don't know, a million percent. I agree with you. I a billion percent agree with you. And I want to, and I and I will, and I am. Um, I just haven't yet. And I definitely, I definitely need one. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I, add I, that to your repertoire going into 2021. Wow. And again, everything, everything happened so fast for me, bro. Everything changed completely quick. So I, I definitely need like therapy to deal with a lot of the shit that I've, I've dealt with and, you know, a, a lot of my new responsibilities and like my new life that I have now, it's definitely a complete I'll, 360. Yeah, because, you know, therapy helped me to deal with a lot of issues I was having with my pops. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, a lot of things that I hadn't had conversations with him about, a lot of things I hadn't dealt with, you know, from from when I was when I was younger. And I was holding a lot of resentment and, and, and a lot of, 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 of anger towards him. You know, but therapy helped me to really process it. Because one thing you realize about your parents, especially your father, is he was a human being just doing the best that he could. You know what I mean? But he had his own demons and his own flaws and his own things that he was dealing with. So it makes you have more empathy for him. For, for at least for me. Fuck that empathy. You know, no empathy. Join us and fuck that. Right. Well, you started rapping because of your father, right? Um. You know, I was influenced. I was definitely influenced, uh, you know, in that, in that being younger and being raised in like a studio environment, and, you know, all the music and shit like that, you know, yeah, of course, a million. I, I, I was, you know, just try to pick it up, you know what I'm saying? Try to impress them, you know, whatever, whatever. But yeah, that was, that was mainly because of that, for sure. You know, but then I, you know, carrying it on and, um, Become better at it, and you know, just you know, working hard to get where you need to go. I mean, that was that was all me. It had nothing to do with him. Wow. Elijah James, your artist. Elijah James is my artist. Okay. Yeah. Elijah James is, is uh he's dope. He's from L.A. and uh very unique, very unique uh, voice. Mm -hmm. Talented, talented guy. For sure. Well, damn, we we appreciate you for joining in this. You've been up here yeah. for an hour, man, and we appreciate you sharing all your stories. I, nah, I, I know you don't like doing interviews, so hopefully you'll come back. Envy's done. Envy's like, all right, we appreciate nah, you. Nah, we can stay here all day. I ain't got nothing to do. It's cold. It's cold. I ain't got no bags to chase. We can stay here all day, brother. Fuck with you. I appreciate y'all. You know, the first time I had an interview at the Breakfast Club was like, what, four years ago? Five yeah. years ago. About five years ago yeah. after the cipher. And even then... I felt like I was I I fucked up, put myself in the box of like you're you're the battle freestyle rapper guy, you know what I mean? I went to the Breakfast Club, y'all was like rap, you know what I said? It's just randomly, right? And that shit just kind of like, and I, once I did that, bro, every I couldn't. Everybody wanted me to just rap like that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> that never happens on the Breakfast Club. <laughs> feel some type of way bro like because i'm like nah like nigga i don't want to be known as this just, just rap guy like nah nigga like you know what i'm saying so a lot of that is the reason why i, I started staying away from certain things it's, you know i have never did sway 
I ain't never did flex. I ain't never did any of these, you know, syndications that actually people go to rap on there. I've never done that because I don't want to be, you know. So you're not gonna rap? You not gonna rap? You are the rap guy, John. You, you're, you're, you're a dope ass rapper, a dope ass creative, but you gotta make a movie. We're gonna make a movie. I wanna, I, I, that's my, that's one of my goals. We're gonna write a movie together. You said we gonna make a movie. Pause, bro. God <laughs> damn, John. You the one told Logic jump wow. on it in the studio. Wow. <laughs> jump on it. I was gonna say next time we do the interview at the pool, but now y'all getting a little kinky over there. I step away. Me and you step away. I'm gonna let y'all go and handle this. Man, um, shut up. <laughs> let them handle this. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Uh, sorry that this whole COVID thing prohibited us from actually meeting in person again. And, you know, sitting down and chopping it up. I brought you guys some. You pictures. look rich, nigga. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I'm proud of you, bro. You look rich. <laughs> I said, I said, I I ain't Yo, you see how you move the camera? It's some, gla it's it's like, some glasses yeah, in that know. pool. Oh, nigga said, nigga said, yeah, man. I I appreciate. I appreciate. <laughs> I really do. I really appreciate you guys, man, for everything, yo. Thank you. <laughs> Peace, King. All right, it's Joy the Lucas. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Yeah. Peace, God. <laughs>